This morning, we're doing a bit of an experiment. It's a town hall debate, right? which means it's a, an open discussion about a theme that science business we consider to be very important, and we think you do too. We would like to think that's why you're here this morning. Do we have the right knowledge, the right tools to practice medicine uh, in an ever more technological, digital healthcare uh, service? Uh, and what happens to, to medicine when uh, the key role of the doctor is to diagnose and treat patients uh, is challenged by artificial intelligence algorithms. And so I don't think that doctors will be replaced by machines, AI algorithms, uh, and so forth, but I think um, that such technologies will uh, definitely be helpful for doctors. They will transform the way medicine is practiced. Uh, and I think that if we can make uh, AI algorithms do more of the groundwork in healthcare, that will actually free up time for doctors to see patients, to care for them. I know exactly, you know, what's wrong with you. Instead of just asking, you know, where is it hurting? But maybe even change, if you come from a lower socioeconomic neighborhood, for example, maybe asking questions like, you know, did you have a good night's sleep? Did you, when was the last time you ate? So that's more the caring part, like you were saying. You know, how can we get to know our patients better? And having this kind of baseline of your own health will make it possible for a smartphone or a virtual doctor to tell you when you're deviating from this health baseline before you experience any symptoms. I was uh, thinking about how the uh, health care system and how health is going to be taken care of in the, in the future and, uh, and I really don't know. I mean, we, uh, we heard a lot of uh, interesting thoughts but uh, it's all thoughts. And uh, when I was uh, uh, your age, I was uh, last year in high school, if someone told me then that I was walking around with a cell phone, uh, were telling me to walk around for 10 minutes, not uh, sitting down too long, being able to call anyone at any time, I, I, w I would be laughing. I wouldn't believe in it. We need to employ new knowledge and new innovations new technologies in all aspects of health and healthcare. But we also need to employ it in looking at what are those societal changes, those systemic changes at a national and international level that we need to emphasize in order to promote health for the future. We do not know how schools, kindergartens, the educational system affects mental health in young children. We know that something has happened, schools have changed, mental health has changed. We don't even know whether it's changed for the better or the worse. We know that many more people are diagnosed. We know that most of the young children who get diagnosed do so after they enter school, but is it because they would get that diagnosis anyway? Or is it something about school that actually influences at least the thresholds for when we set a diagnosis like ADHD. But we're not really looking at the system. Is, is there something that we could change in school so that not so many children didn't need that diagnosis, that they would grow up without needing it, that then perhaps it would never happen to them? We don't know that. And we don't know whether depression and anxiety among young girls teenagers that has increased very rapidly in many countries, it represents a real change or that they now finally get treatment for something that they should have had treatment for years back. We need to look at that, those systems that are influencing those needs that become individual needs, but we need to look at the collective and systematic aspects of it. And if we equip the coming generations better to deal with, with percentages and risk factors, I think we actually go a long way. And then when you eventually, if you get your genome sequenced and you say, okay, I have a 5% risk of this or that, you know what that means and you're better equipped to deal with it. You have a competence that we do not have. The technology is already there, uh, uh, but the knowledge how to use it uh, in society is not there. 
And that, that's why I think also in the educations, we as providers of educations have to turn everything around because the technology has moved much faster than we have been able to pick up. What I would like to see for the future is to make a visit to the GP a lot easier and that I can just do it with, with my smartphone and a camera. And especially as a parent to a toddler, I would like to be able to just call whenever and say my daughter has a fever again, tell me what to do or give me a prescription, or, you know. Uh, have that kind of interaction and that I think will make healthcare more available to everyone. And then we'll have other forms of healthcare, not only the GP, but have easier access to psychologists and nutritionists and the whole spectrum so that you can get better healthcare to everyone anywhere. But if they know, if the doctors know more about the patients before they come in, if you can segment your patients and only treat the highest risk that really needs help, which is the 10% that drives 90% of the cost. And then the rest of them, then digital tools come in for those who are lower risk, then they can sort of, you can manage them with you know, nurses or specialized nurses to manage the, the lower risk patients. Mm. But it's also important at a societal level. So for example, one of the large health organizations in the US has recently decided to invest heavily in housing because they found out that that's the most important thing to do to decrease the need for healthcare in their, the population that they're covering. So that's not an individual decision, that's, but it's a very human decision, I think. Yeah. Uh, that, that is what they can do for prevention that will <coughs> count most. When someone comes to me I, uh, as a doctor with with a lot of information that she has collected uh, through the iWatch. Uh, how can I uh, handle the data? How can I trust it? Can I use it in, in, in a proper way? So we don't have, I mean, it's not, uh, we don't know if, if the data that uh, we get has the quality needed uh, to uh, give us uh, good information how to treat and how to handle it. So I, I think also combining data but also securing the quality of the data will be, uh, uh, will be important. That's, nowadays, I think we're treating symptoms and not causes. And we have to find the causes. I get terrified when I hear uh, young people at the age of my daughters that are receiving medical treatment for anxiety and depressions. Lots of them. We treat them with, uh, with medicals instead of seeing what's the cause, how can we help you uh, otherwise. And we have to deal with that. That's, uh, I don't know how we can use technology for that, but uh, maybe, as Camilla said, we can combine uh, data information and registries and see how was, what school did you attend to, how did you grow up, how was your family, and stuff like that to, to figure out or how, how do young people respond to, to being online all the time and, uh, and uh, getting likes or dislikes and, and that sort of things. Because I think that's an important issue, that they're, they're out there all the time. They are being judged uh, even when they're sleeping. So a lot of those apps that cause a lot of this stress are specifically designed to be addictive and to keep using them and to keep you staying up at night, for instance. So younger kids sleep a lot less now than they should. And the problem then with the healthy apps is that they're not addictive and they don't change behavior in that way. Mm -hmm. So some of the new trends for, for healthcare apps is to gamify health, to make it into a game where like you collect points if you live more healthy and create this more of a social environment for healthy living. And I'm not sure that's going to succeed. But I think definitely a lot of these social apps today are a huge cause of stress and take away a lot of our sleep. For instance, let's talk about uh, nutrition and all of these apps available to track your food intake. I think that's a big kickoff for an eating disorder. I think it's very few of us who, would, who should be that focused on what we eat. Uh, it should be much more like a general healthy living kind of thing. But if you go around tracking all of your food intake and then get it like in your face when you get up in the morning, oh wow, you ate a cake last night, <laughs> then I, 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 
that does not promote any uh, mental health or well-being. I just want to say I absolutely agree and I, I think that it would, one thing is that it can be very hard for vulnerable people but also I doubt whether it's actually efficient because most of these things are they are social. Eating is social, moving is social, learning is social. So you have, we have to look at how we design our schools, how we design our cities, etc. And that's the social thing, and it provides social movements to do so. Now we need to use all the knowledge and technologies for those purposes, because they're very useful for those purposes also, but that's a matter of changing the way we think about how we can use these technologies and, and where there's something to achieve without suffering of many people. And I also think that we haven't looked at how that affects social inequality in society, which I, I would hypothesize that it does, that it may even increase it. But I don't, we don't know. Because uh, the, the technology has maybe been good for us, but it has definitely also been bad. And uh, uh, looking upon uh, on this in a broader perspective, and, and uh, trying to steer the development uh, more actively than we have been doing until now, uh, I think it's important. Health has improved immensely over the last hundred years, and I am certain that health can improve equally uh, over the next hundred years. I think we can manage to stop and turn the uh, obesity epidemic among young children and adolescents. I think we can understand, uh, probably uh, change the, uh, the epidemic of diagnosis of psychiatric disorders among young people. I think we can achieve many, many other things that are more obvious, for example, much better cancer treatment and treatment uh, for neurodevelopmental and neurodegenerative disorders, etc. But I definitely think that that requires that we look at health not only as an individual thing, uh, that we look at it as a societal phenomenon that has to have societal mobilization and good policies as the driving force. And they have to be human and build on humanism, but we need the science and technology and to use it for those purposes. Mm -hmm.